an African thunderstorm. A poem written by a Malawian poet, David Rubadiri. Welcome, dear viewers, listeners, teachers, students, and the lovers of literature. Before proceeding, I wish to present to you the biographic note of the writer of this poem, who was David Rubadiri. David Rubadiri was born in Malawi in 1930. He went to school in Uganda. He studied English literature in Uganda and in the United Kingdom. He was an ambassador representing Malawi in the United States in 1964. He was a lecturer at the University of Nairobi, Kenya. David Rubadiri was an academic, a novelist, but also a playwright. He died in September 15, 2018. Dear listeners, as far as the heading of this poem is concerned, an African thunderstorm, David Rubadiri presents to us the effect that this, the thunderstorm has on Africa. But bear in, in your mind that the thunderstorm presented in this poem is not that of an ordinary thunderstorm. But the thunderstorm has been used to imply African colonization, oppression, injustice, and some other uh, social turmoil. Rubadiri's poem captures the looming arrival of a fierce storm that hits an Afghan village. The anticipation of its arrival is both exciting and frightening. And before we head on with deeper analysis of this poem, I wish to read a poem for you. The poem reads, from the west, clouds come hurrying with the wind, turning sharply here and there, like a plague of locusts, wearing, tossing up things on its tail, like a madman chasing nothing. Pregnant clouds ride steadily on its back gathering to perch on hills like sinister dark wings. The wind whistles by, and the trees bend to let it pass. In the village, screams of delighted children toss and turn in the din of the whirring wind. Women, babies clinging on their backs, dart about in and out, madly. The wind whistles by, whilst trees bend to let it pass. Clothes wave like tattered flags, flying off to expose dangling breasts, as jagged blinding flashes rumble, tremble, and crack Jagged blinding flashes amidst the smell of fiery smoke and pelting and the pelting much of the storm. Dear listeners, let us have a verse 
after various analysis in between the lines analysis of this poem. To begin with the first verse of this poem, from the West, this verse implies that the storm originated in the West. The storm came in the West. It came from the West. The word West has been used to symbolize Western world. What are those countries? They include the US and the Europe at large. To mean that colonialism came from the West. Clouds come hurrying with the wind. The clouds are gathering very quickly. The front movement captures the build up and the unpredictable nature of the storm. To mean that colonialism in Africa was more destructive and this reminds us a very common historical statement. Was colonialism a blessing or a curse in Africa? As far as this poem is concerned, colonialism seems to be a curse, very dis destructive in all aspects of human life. And Africa could not manage to face its destructive nature. Whereby the colonialists seem to be exploitative, oppressive, humiliating, and unjust to African continent. Lines three to four, turning sharply. Remember this poem has fewer punctuation marks to mark the vigors to mark the sharp movement of the thunderstorm to mean that colonialism was more destructive both to humankind and the nature how nature responded to colonial domination how Africans responded to colonial domination remember not only Africans but also other countries apart from African countries experienced the colonial, colonialism as well line 5 here and there well the thunderstorm seems to be changing with direction it is in a disordering manner to imply that the storm is powerful and imminent Dear listeners, line 6 to line 7 of this poem, like a plug of locusts wearing. The writer has made the use of biblical allusion in this verse, like a plug of locusts, to imply what was sent by God to destroy the Egyptian crops but here in this poem the phrase has been used to imply how destructive colonialism was in Africa wearing the thunderstorm is compared to a plague of locusts as I have said before and the wind has no pattern it is wearing it does, does not have an order of motion this has used to emphasize the potentiality and the potentially destructive nature of the storm and the pandemonium that will follow 
line 8 to 9, <coughs> tossing up things on its tail, like a madman chasing nothing. The phrase tossing up things has been used to emphasize the destruction and the unpredictable nature of the storm by comparing the wind to a monster <coughs> it is like a destructive angel threshing its tail about this adds to its danger to imply that the thunderstorm is very dangerous and destructive like a madman this is the use of scenery the writer has made the use of scenery in this line whereby the movement of the wind is compared to the movements of a madman chasing nothing just as a person cannot make sense of the movements of a madman or predict his movement the direction of wind is not fixed this emphasizes the power of nature Not that the storm is symbolic of the arrival of the Europeans who came from the West. They colonized Africa very quickly, sharply as far as this poem is concerned. They could not understand or predict the movement of the colonialists. The arrival caused a great upheaval in the lives of the black people. Lines 10 to 11, <coughs> pregnant clouds ride statry on its back. This verse, the use of words pregnant clouds has been used to imply colonial superiority. And this is personification. How comes clouds become pregnant? This is personification. Only human beings can be pregnant and not clouds. The clouds are compared to a pregnant lady. And this has also been used to emphasize that a storm is about to start. Ride the tree on its back. This is a metaphor. The clouds are compared to a person of royalty on a horse riding, riding statry on its back to mean that he will sit upright full of dignity similarly the crowds are carried by the wind but also the writer has made the use of iron here when the wind has caused damage on the ground the crowds are not affected by the wind this is an opposite statement. How comes for the wind causing damage on the ground, but the clouds are not affected by the by the wind? Line twelve to thirteen <coughs> gathering to perch on hills like sinister dark wings. Here goes personification of the clouds where it is extended in these lines. But also similar has been used here, whereby the clouds are compared to beds of prey. Just as they come together to feast, so to do the clouds. The birds are evil, menacing. The clouds are ominous like birds of prey waiting for the opportune moment to strike. Verse 14, the wind whistles by. This is onomatopoeia of the word whistle. For by this implies the sound of the wind, emphasizing the force of the wind. Verse 15, and the trees bend to let it pass. This has been used to imply the response of nature to the thunderstorm. And this is personification, how comes for trees to bend, to let the thunderstorm pass. A person will bow to somebody superior. 
this is an implication that colonial colonialism was something superior more superior than africans then both nature and humans could both nature especially trees bend but remember humans do not bend they move here and there trying to fight trying to escape from the effect of this storm trees are associated with strength however even the trees are bowing to the power of the wind the path of the storm has not been diminished by the trees instead the trees give way to allow it to progress unhindered dear listeners lines 16 to 17 in the village screams of delighted children the children are excited the children seem to be happy by the arriving storm that seems to be destructive they are unaware of, of any danger that is going to happen this, this is what as far as in literature is concerned the poet has made the use of dramatic iron for a by the readers seem to be obvious of what is happening in a poem but characters seem not to be obvious with what is happening so children seem to be delighted with the arrival of the storm while in the actual sense the storm seems to be destructive and possibly it is going to wash away their lives lines 18 to 19 <coughs> toss and turn in the din of whirring wind the poet continue describing the appearance of the storm and the movement of the storm how destructive nature the storm is and remember there are screams the screams of the children seem to be mixed with the sound of the wind when the writer says toss and turn in the din of the whirring wind in the in the din this is imagery implying the sound of the wind that seems to be very loud remember the sound of the storm is mixed up with the cries of the children lines 22 24 women babies clinging on their backs that is imagery when whereby babies can be seen clinging on 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 on, on women's backs that about in and out madly women seem to that about they are in movement in and out madly fearing of the arriving storm trying to save their lives and the lives of their babies the short lines convey the urgent and frantic movement of the women the women unlike the children are aware of the possible dangers of the impending storm they are rushing in and out of their homes trying to ensure that everything is safe this is equated to how col colonialism was perceived by africans to imply that it was destructive fearful worth to protest against some other words like that in and out have been used to convey the urgency front movement the women hurriedly attempted to prepare for the storm the word madri has been used to emphasize their panic 
they are moving, panicking, trying to save their lives. It is because the, the, the storm seems to be fierce. Lines 25 to 26, the wind whistles by. Worries the trees bend, let it pass. This is repetition. The verse, worries the trees bend, let it pass, has been repeated for the second time to show how nature reacted to the arrival of the storm. This is an emphasis on the issue of how destructive, how fearful colon colonialism was. And this repetition has been used to emphasize how Africans resisted the arrival of the colonialists. The children are excited by, by the arrival of the colonialism or the arrival of the stranger, strangers. However, the women were aware of the impending danger. Verses, verse 27 states, clothes wave like tattered flags. This is similar and imagery. Clothes have been forced, forced to wave like tattered flags. In addition, tattered flags has been used to symbolize countries, Afga Afghan countries whose dignity was torn off by colonialism, whose dignity, whose humanity, whose value was destroyed, humiliated whose independence had been snatched away. There is nothing regal, majestic, stately about torn flags. Their clothing flaps about just as torn flags world. Lines 28 to 29, flying off to expose dangling breasts. What does this verse imply? It implies how humiliating colonialism was. Remember, colonialism was accompanied by human humiliation, especially some inhuman actions done to Africans, especially African women. Remember, African women were raped. African women were exposed to humiliation. Some were even beaten severely and whipped. But also here, because the wind is extremely strong, it strips people of their dignity. Their dignity seems to be stripped. It is taken away by the colonialist. And eventually, they are completely at the mess of the wind. They have no protection from the storm. Get a theme of humiliation and dignity, whereby Afghan dignity was taken away by the colonialist. Lines 30 to 31, as jagged blinding flashes, rumble, tremble, and cracks. Dear listeners, jagged blinding flashes are the vivid description of lightning emphasizing that the storm is about to break. How the storm rumbles, how the storm trembles, how the storm cracks. Some words like rumble, tremble, cracks are the representation of onomatopoeia as a figure of speech. And this uses similar words to emphasize the sound and the intensity of the thunder. The two last verses, line, lines 32 to, to, to 33, as they state, amidst the smell of fiery smoke and the pelting much of the storm. 
This implies how violent the storm is. And a tree was struck by lightning. The fire spread and they could smell the smoke of burning tree. The word smell has been used to symbolize something unpleasant. The word parroting has been used to emphasize the intensity of the storm. The rain was falling with a great deal of force. The phrase much of the storm implies that the storm was moving with the wind. The word much has been used to suggest a relentless movement of the storm. It could not be stopped. This has been used to imply that the blacks were enslaved and stripped of their dignity. They lost their identity. Their flags were tattered. The thunder and lightning is symbolic of gunfire and the battles. Dear listeners, what are the possible themes to be obtained from this poem? I wish to remind you some that have been mentioned. They include colonial domination, oppression, racial injustice, humiliation, classes, exploitation, conflict, the power of nature, the suddenness and violence of the storm. Rabbi, they have been used to imply or to refer to colonialism. The tone of this poem is dismay. Rabbi, the author is not happy. He concentrates on telling us about the damage caused by the rain and wind. A plague of locusts is never a good thing, at least for the crops. And this contrasts with the usual view of rain in African society, whereby rain in Africa is a blessing. Everything loves the approach of rain, not just children. It is good for the crops and the animals as it increases the harvest. However, this storm causes the destruction. Therefore, it is not good. What is the mood of this poem? This, the mood of this poem is distressed. 